you're joining us this morning, watching on Facebook. Hey, what y'all doing out there? Good to see you. Well, I really can't see you, but I'm, you can see me. I can't see you. Praise God. Good things are happening. God is doing great things in the earth. We're just believing for the rest of 2021 to be amazing, that we're going to taste and see the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to taste and see that God is good. Amen. We want to be in faith for the goodness of God to be manifest. Let me just encourage you, if you're joining us uh, on Facebook, just take a minute and please share this. Uh, We're we're really kind of lacking on the sharing. I think we only had 17 shares last week, which is really not the greatest. We want to kind of get our numbers up there, up in the 30s and 40s, if we can. The more people that share this, the more people get to see it uh, out there in Facebook world, whatever, wherever that is, that's all over the world. Uh, we did uh, boost our message last week, both to the United States and to Australia again. Uh, we combined, we were around 480 people that watched it all the way through between Australia and uh, the United States. And so that's good, but we want to reach more people, right? That's why we do what we do. That's why we have, uh, you know, live stream and we're live streaming to Facebook We just want to reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so help us do that, please, by sharing. Uh, Also, if you'd like to be a blessing to the ministry of New Beginnings Church, if we've been a blessing to you, uh, please go ahead and you can uh, go to our website, newbeginningsbangor.org, and you can give by PayPal there. Or if you'd like to just put something in the mail, you can send something to New Beginnings Church, 8 Molly Lane, Bangor, Maine, 04401. Praise God. Last week, we begin a new series um, called Created to be an Asset, and I hope you learned something last week. I hope you enjoyed that message. We will continue. This will be session two in uh, the series Created to be an Asset. So God has created each one of us to be an asset. Uh, We could say it this way. God's created each one of us to make a difference. Amen? Amen. Uh, You know, one of the things that you realize in life, if you're going to make a difference, and let me just say it this way, in a positive direction, if you're going to make a difference, because many people make a difference in a negative direction, right? And I think in this room, we know that that every one of us in this room, in one way or another, we've influenced people in a wrong direction, and we've influenced people in the right direction. But, you know, the more I understand this, I want to minimize how much I'm negatively influencing people and maximize how much I'm able to have a positive influence in other people's lives. The word asset, let me define it for you. The word asset and some synonymous words that go along with it. The word asset means useful, valuable, some other synonymous words that go along with it. Speaking of us as individuals... Uh, you uh, a benefit. So if you're an asset, you're a benefit. If you're an asset, you're a blessing. Glory to God. Versus a curse. Right? And if you're an asset, that means you also, wherever you are, you are, you bring an advantage to wherever you are. And so God has created us to be an asset, a blessing. He's called, created us to be useful He's created us to be a benefit. And um, I don't know about you, but I want to do that. I want to be a benefit wherever I am. Um, we Last week, we looked at the life of Jesus. We didn't spend a lot of time in respect to the life of Jesus because it was very easy to build a case that Jesus was an asset when he was in the earth, right? We referenced uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, where Peter, speaking to Cornelius and the people of his house, Um, Peter is preaching a message there, and he uses these words. He says, Jesus Christ, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And so Jesus is, uh, or Peter is giving us a kind of a picture of the ministry of Jesus that everywhere he went, because he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about doing good. Well, the idea of Jesus doing good also parallels this idea that Jesus was an asset. Isn't that right? That wherever he showed up, when he healed people and everything that he did, he was a benefit to them. He was a blessing to them. Amen. And God wants us to be the same way. 
And so we created the parallel last week. We spent time in uh, bringing understanding that even though Jesus was an asset, we're also created to be an asset too. And we begin to put emphasis on the idea that Jesus lives on the inside of us. And so let's go to Galatians this morning in the way of review. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Let's look there to the 20th verse as Paul is writing here to the church of Galatia. And I like this that Paul sees himself as an asset. But in Galatians 2.20 we begin to get a picture of, of a mindset that we're going to have to have if God's going to be able to use us to, to the full. Y'all listening to me? There's a mindset. It's a way of thinking. If you or I are going to be used by God to the fullest, we have to have a way of thinking that allows Him to use us. And here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. He's talking about a spiritual identification. When I put faith in Jesus Christ because he was crucified, remember now, who did Jesus go to the cross for? For himself. Not for himself, but for us. Isn't that right? Not for himself, but for us. So when Jesus was crucified, who was also crucified? You and I, because he's, he was crucified for us. Now understand, this is, this is the way God sees it. This is a truth. I have been crucified with Christ. If you put faith in Jesus Christ today, you've also been crucified with Christ. That is a spiritual reality the way God sees it. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ, Paul says, or really the Spirit of God through Paul. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. So we said if Jesus was an asset in the earth, but now he lives in us, then he wants, still wants to be an asset, doesn't he? But he wants to be an asset now, how? Through us. And we put emphasis on that little word, in. Uh, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, uh, but Christ who lives in me. That word in, it's the little Greek word en, en, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but it means in, almost not, about 1900 times it's used as in, it also means by, with, or it also means this, 39 times it's used as through. And we read it that way, and let's do it again today. It says, let's read it with the word through in there. I have been crucified with Christ, it's no longer I who lives but Christ lives through me. So Jesus lives in me so that he can live through me. So we need to, when we think about this idea that Jesus living, it lives in us to live through us, we have to also think about to what degree is he able to live through us, right? I think in this room, you know, each one of us represent a different percentage of the level that God is able to use us. Now understand, He wants to use us to the full, but what percentage have we been yielding to Him? Or even yielding to Him comes with knowledge of the fact that He lives in me. It really begins at that place. It begins at the place that really Paul's revealing to us that it's Christ in me wanting to live through me. Now once I know that, now I can begin to cooperate with Christ in me. That word Christ means the anointed one. So the anointed one lives in me and wants to live through me. Now, I don't know about you, whatever percentage. So if 100% is the, is the maximum amount that Jesus could live through me, how many of us want to get to that place? Where, where, woo, glory to God. Can you think about, when you think about 100% of Jesus living through all of me. Well, I can tell you that I'm not at 100%. And, and understand this, it's not because I don't know that Christ lives in me. It's oftentimes it's that I'm not cooperating with Him. Or even the idea, sometimes you can have head knowledge of something, but not really 
have a true heart understanding where you're cooperating with that truth. I mean, I could tell you Christ lives in me, but am I, am I, am I living in the light of that moment by moment? See, that, there's a difference, isn't that right? M- moment by moment, every day, moment by moment versus a moment here and a moment there. I mean, we begin to think about what Jesus did in the earth, all that he did in the earth, realizing he still wants to continue that work because he lives in us. We said this last week, Jesus really multiplied himself. He multiplied himself by putting himself in every person who believes in him so that all across this planet there are believers and Christ lives in every one of them. And what we want to do is we want to increase the percentage that Christ is able to live through us. Let's ask ourselves when people came into contact with Jesus, whether he was speaking or whether he was manifesting power of some kind, were, were their lives transformed? Were their lives changed? Did, was Jesus an asset there? Absolutely. And what we do oftentimes is when we begin to think like this, there's, we, we almost like screw a lid on. Does that make sense? The lid represents a ceiling. So we talk about Christ living in us and that Christ wants to use us. Christ wants to manifest himself through me. And the more we think about that, there's like these lids. And the lid is uh, unbelief, doubt. Doubt and unbelief become ceilings. Listen. You all listening to me? Amen. Doubt and unbelief become, become ceilings in which the person of Christ is limited in and through us. And in this room, there's representa- representation of both faith, unbelief, and doubt. There's measures of it in every one of our lives. Both faith, God's using you in some areas. But he's not able to use you in other areas because you've got a ceiling of doubt or unbelief. Or I've got a ceiling of doubt and unbelief. Now listen, if we're going to be able to maximize the measure of which Christ is going to use us, we're going to have to point at doubt and unbelief. We've got to put our finger on it and we've got to begin to deal with that. Amen. How much more does Jesus want to use us. Remember now, what's his passion? People. L- listen, listen to what I'm saying. His passion is people. Was Jesus about, passionate about people? Well, he came to die for us. Now, now listen, listen to what I'm about to say. This is really going to, this is going to spank you. So we know Jesus was passionate about people. Now here's a question. How passionate are you about people? And the measurement that you're passionate about people is a revelation as to where your lid is. So Christ lives in me absolutely passionate about helping people wherever I am. The Christ in me. He's passionate about using me in 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 amazing ways. And yet we've got lids on of doubt and unbelief. And and he's passionate about people. But if I'm not passionate about people, then the measure which he can use me is limited. Praise God. Woo, we're getting a Holy Ghost education this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, we didn't, we didn't come to play patty cake. No, tiddly winks aren't on the agenda today. Hallelujah. If you brought your tiddly winks, well, you can just keep them in your pocket. We're here to do kingdom business. Isn't that right? We're here to hear the truth so that the truth can do what? Liberate us into greater usefulness or to be, great, be a greater asset in the earth through the one who lives in me. 
And what we want to do is put greater attention on this idea that Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Every day, I, I, I mean, I think about the Apostle Paul. We made mention of this. Did he live a life in, uh, in, with the understanding of this truth that he states? Does that make sense? Meaning, when he says, I've been crucified with Christ, are these just words or was it a way that he lived? It's, when he said, it's no longer I who lives, did he live that way? It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. Did he live that way? Why did he live that way? Because he knew who was in him. And he was, listen, and he was living, he was willing to maintain a life of crucifixion. That is, not letting the old man ever live again. So uncomfortable, isn't it? What is the old man? Self. Selfish. And the reason we don't, we don't, we're not concerned about others is because we're so concerned with our self. Ser- seriously, just, just think about it. The reason that you're not pouring yourself into others is because you're so consumed with you or I'm so consumed with me. This is the truth. Right? Can anybody relate to me today? I mean, I'm talking to myself. And the Christ in me wants to live through me. He's passionate about others. But if I don't get passionate about others, which, which means I've got to be less passionate about myself. If you're ever going to be more passionate about others, that means you've diminished your passion for you. Well, because what you've done is you've, you've surrendered to Christ in you. You've surrendered to his vision and passion for people. And you're trusting that he has your best interest in mind. And that he knows your every, every need. I love that. Well, I think it's, what is it, Luke 6, where he talks about, Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Well, if, if we're focused on things, we're really focused on self. The only reason you or I are focused on things is because we're current concerned for self. And what Jesus is saying, no, you've got to become kingdom minded. And kingdom minded people are other minded people. They're always thinking about what others, what's, what's going on in others' lives. Is that what Jesus did? Was he about the kingdom? So, because Jesus was about the kingdom, was he about himself? No, he wasn't about himself at all. Not, at, not ever about himself. Everything he did in the earth was for others. And that same person lives in us. Man, I've got, some, I've got some growing to do. About the time you think you've, you know, you've got somewhere, all of a sudden God reveals the truth to you and goes, that's really where you're at, son. That's really where you're at. <laughs> it's good to know the truth. That way you're not walking around deceived. The truth hurts. Sometimes, doesn't it? I'm so thankful for the truth, though. I don't want to live in deception. I don't want to live in a lie. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. If he was crucified with Christ, when Christ died, I died. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We can answer the question as to what that looked like in Paul's life. As we mentioned last week, as we read through the book of Acts especially, uh, and certainly other epistles, but we see much of, of some of Paul's life and how he lived his life committed to the work of ministry. It was his main focus. Amen? That he's committed, even after being stoned. 
even after being shipwrecked, shipwrecked, even after being beaten, flogged, imprisoned, shackled to a wall, he's a committed man. Why? There's something more important to him than himself. Praise God. So it's no longer I who live. So the, you know, the I is the problem in every one of our lives. Isn't that right? I, I is speaking of self. Me-ism. I-ism. That you and I are the main focus of our own lives. And there's a problem there. I need to be invested in others and trust God for whatever is going on in my life. I believe that's how Paul lived. He believed that no matter what he was facing, he was always focused on the goal and investing in others, being an asset to others to fulfill his calling to do that. And he just trusted God for his needs to be met. I like the Philippians, he talks about, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. What's he saying? I, I know how to, he also says, I know how, how to have little, and I also know how to have much. So having little or having much didn't affect his overall mindset. He continued in his service to God, focused on his assignment, focused on being an asset wherever he was and to the people that he was around. Same mindset that Jesus had right? But we can understand that Paul, Paul's success was attributed to the idea that he knew that Christ lived in him, that it was no longer him that lives, but it was Christ living through him. Do we want more of Jesus living through us? And, and I would, I'll say it this way, until you or I want more of Jesus living through us, it won't take place. Wherever you've thrown the lid on, that's, that's the level it's going to stay until you take the level, that lid off of unbelief or doubt, and you take that off, and when you take that lid off, and I t if I take that lid off, the measure to which Christ is able to live through us now begins to do what? Increase until it hits another ceiling. You, have, you and I have to keep dealing with ceilings. I can see ceilings in my life today. I can see ceilings in my life. We're going we're gonna to look into a scripture here this morning that, that when, I, when I think about it, there's a ceiling every time I read it. And I've got to deal with that ceiling. What, let's ask ourselves this. How do I overcome the ceiling of doubt and unbelief? I hold the word of God in higher esteem. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The only way to overcome doubt and unbelief is to hold the Word of God in higher esteem than what, whatever else you're holding in higher esteem. Because that lid that you've thrown on of doubt and unbelief, it's that you're considering something other than the Word of God. Or I'm considering something other than what the Word of God says. I'm considering my feelings, the circumstance, the situation. What are they going to think? I've got all these other considerations other than what this says. And this is the only place that I'm going to be able to lift the lid of doubt and unbelief. I've got to come back to what this says, feed on it, meditate it, speak it, declare it. We, 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 get, we get satisfied with just doing church. Seriously. We get satisfied with coming through those doors on a Sunday morning and, and, you know, you're coming into this place and we sing some songs and that's all good. It's God would want us to do that. I'm not saying that he wouldn't. But God wants us to, to be used when we leave this place. In the grocery store, in the restaurant, wherever it is, at the gas station, wherever you are, Christ is. Right? Right? Wherever Jesus went, wherever he walked, wherever he went, he, he, he manifested himself as an asset. He yielded to the Holy Ghost 
and the power that was within him. And by so doing, he became an asset. Amen. Go with me to John 14. Actually, no, let's not go there yet. Uh, Ephesians 2. We're still in review. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says this, for we are his workmanship. We, as every believer, those who put faith in Jesus Christ, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus, notice this, for good works. Or we've, we're using this phrase to be an asset, right? So we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works or to be an asset. So that wherever you are, that you can be a benefit, a blessing there to be useful. Praise God. Wherever you are, not just in church, right? Very little ministry takes place in church because you're only in church two hours uh, at this place, about two hours a week. And if that's the only place you, ministry takes place for you or I, then we're falling way short. Amen. Amen. I'm being real. God wants to use us everywhere. I mean, everywhere we go. God wants to use us in some capacity. So we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works or to be an asset. What what are we seeing? This is God's plan for us, right? God's saying, I created you to be an asset. And the, the, the interesting thing about somebody who creates something, he creates it with the idea of uh, its value. Does that make sense? So he's the, the creator is the one who defines the reason you exist. God is the one who's already defined the reason you exist. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. It says, which he prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. What does it mean to walk in them? Fulfill them. Isn't that right? To do what what he has already beforehand prepared for us to do. And understand, whatever this good work is, it's going to have an influence on people. Because everything everything that God is about, everything that Jesus is about, is about Helping people. So you can be assured that whatever good work it is, it's going to have to do with people. A person or people, whatever, whatever it may look like, right? That we should walk in them. So that we have a responsibility to, one, be aware of the Christ in us. Two, be aware that he wants to use us. That Christ in me wants to work through me. He's created me for good works. But it's really Christ in me. Using me as a vessel for good works. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But the question is, is we have to ask ourselves, do we want to be used? Many people just, they don't want to be used. They just want to come and go. They want to do church, and that's it. Boy, we all, we all need to get to the place. I, I guarantee everybody in this room, your desire to be used could be increased. Seriously. I mean seriously increased. Mine included. Seriously increased. Praise God. So again, we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. God created me to be a benefit. He created you to be a benefit. Created you to be a blessing. Created me to be a blessing wherever I am. And I'm a blessing or an asset wherever I go because Christ lives in me. I'm allowing him to live through me. We want to increase that percentage of which Christ could live through us. We want to lift the lids. We want to deal with the doubt and unbelief. Wherever we hit a lid, 
I've noticed this with lids. Sometimes I just keep putting up with the lid. Right? There I am. I hit the lid. I hit the lid. And then I go back down. Hit the lid. Lids, are, lids are, are, are made to be unscrewed. Or popped off. Right? A lid is, is created to come off and let what, whatever is on the inside be enjoyed. Glory to God. I like peanut butter. I'm a peanut butter fan. But you need to know that lid, that lid is good on that cover. The, that cover, that lid on that peanut butter is good until I, I want some of it. Isn't that right? And when I want some, some of it, I got to get the lid off so that what's on the inside can be a benefit to me. Oh, glory to God. Nobody else is going to be able to get your lid off. But you need to know that there's people that God's created who need the Christ in you. But you and I got to get the lid off so that they can have some. Woo! Glory to God. It's not like the can of peanut butter where I can go and unscrew it. No, nobody else can unscrew your lid of unbelief or doubt. Nobody can. You got to. Now, some, God may use somebody to speak a word to you, but whatever that word is, whatever the truth is of that word, it's your job, my job, to mix it with faith. Praise God. Y'all getting anything out of this today? My goodness, we probably could stop right here and that'd be enough. I just like to, you know, like, I like to give a big meal, right? So plenty of steak, lots of potatoes, salad, some vegetables. How about a little nice bread or whatever? You know, we, we want to we spread the table large. And that, whatever you want to eat, you go ahead and eat. And whenever you stop, guess what? That's more for others. Hallelujah. So we're just going to keep giving you a good old meal this morning. Hallelujah. John 14, let's go there now. We're done with review. John chapter 14. Look with me there to verse 10. John 14, 10. And we're going to get into a scripture that, that I, have, I see a lid on in my life, and maybe you do too. In John 14, 10, it says, Jesus is speaking here. He says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Woo! Now notice that. Not, notice this. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Now I flipped that around and I pointed that at myself and putting Christ in there. Do I not believe that I am in, in Christ and Christ is in me? Do I not believe? Is belief an important? Yeah. Do I not believe that Christ is in me and I am in Christ? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, we know that we're in Christ and Christ is in us. Isn't that right? Do you not believe that Christ is in me and, and I am in Christ? Or I am in Christ and Christ is in me. That's important. Jesus is talking about the Father. He's obviously not talking about himself. He's saying the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. For us it's I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Is that important? Now, now, why is Jesus making reference to it? Well, let's let him explain. He says, do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, notice this, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father, notice this, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. What is Jesus saying? I yielded to the Father who dwelled in me and because the Father dwelled in me, 
I was able to do the, it was the Father doing the works. What kind of works? Good works. When Jesus did good works, was he an asset? So now we have Christ living in us, and we're in, in him. And it's not us that's doing the works, but it's Christ doing the works. Hallelujah. Notice this, he says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the works themselves. Notice verse 12. So it's, we can see what Jesus is saying here. We can see the parallel for us from the other scriptures that we've used. Right? Now here we go, verse 12. And here's where I've had a lid. He says this, most assuredly. Remember, we've said this before. Any time that he says, truly, truly, surely, surely, truly, truly, it's, there's an extra emphasis on the importance of, of the truth of what he's about to say. You know, sometimes he has to say that because what he's about to say, your mind will go tilt. Right? But Jesus, before he even says it, says, truly, truly. Why? Why? Because he doesn't want our minds to go tilt. See, this is the problem. Most of our minds have gone tilt on verse 12. We're okay with what he said about himself. Who the works that Jesus did, the Father did it through him. Glory. Mm. When Jesus was on the earth, God was working through him. Well, that's great for Jesus. What about you? And, and, that, and this is what verse 12 is all about. Truly, truly, or most assuredly, I say to you, who's you? Every believer. Notice this. He who believes in me. He could have said and only used the names of the ones he was speaking to. But he didn't do that, did he? He who believes in me. He didn't say, you guys who are special. You apostles that I've named and given you the, the title of apostle. No? No, he didn't say that. He said, he who believes in me, notice this, the works that I do, he will do also. Amen. Aurora says amen. Glory to God. The works that I do, he will do also. See, so now, now understand, this is a place where your mind can go tilt, and this is where the lid gets screwed on. Right? The works that he did, I will do also. Boom. Ceiling. 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 The works that I do, he will do also. Notice this in greater works then these he will do because I go to my Father. So we've got to embrace what Jesus is saying here. And if we're going to lift the lid and be able to actually do what he says, we've got to embrace that truth over our doubt and unbelief concerning it. Because the you means you. He didn't say these few special people he said, he who believes in me. That's an inclusive. It's available to who? Everyone who believes in him. And we, we're gonna, we can add some other things here too. As we get into this, we're going to see that. Because even Jesus, we know this, that he didn't do anything apart from the work of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit. Right? At 30, uh, 30 years old, he was... a uh, the, baptized in the river Jordan by John, the Spirit of God descended upon him. In Luke 4.14, 4, it says he returned in the power of the Spirit. Prior to Jesus being the Spirit of God coming on upon him, he did no works. There's no record of Jesus doing anything prior to that. So there's an emphasis on the ministry of the, the Holy Spirit and power. Right? 
And this kind of we can see here the reference to when Jesus says, because I go to my Father. Well, what is that all about? Well, let's continue to read. And whatever you ask in my name, verse 13, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's in direct relationship with works, doing the works, making a request in doing the works, trying to accomplish something, getting something done, right? He goes on to say, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another what? Helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Well, who are we dealing with? The Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Truth. Many names for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. He's the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of God. He's the Spirit of Grace. He's the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation. Many things that are associated with the Holy Spirit. But the point is, is that we're dealing with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, I'm... I'm going away. I'm leaving, but I'm, I'm sending someone else to help you. He's the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells, notice this, he dwells with you and will be in you. So is there any difference between Christ in us and the Holy Spirit? No, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of God. Right? They are one. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got Jesus. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got God. Amen. So when the Holy Ghost comes to live in the inside of us, what comes with him? Power. Acts chapter 1, let's go there. Acts chapter 1. Power to do what? To be an asset. And being an asset looks like a lot of different things. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, But to wait for the promise of the Father, here, let me just say, here he's directly speaking to the twelve. It says that in the previous uh, verses. He's directly speaking to just the apostles, but we're going to try to dismantle a mindset that it was only the apostles who could function in greater power. We're not going to try, we're going to do it. And being assembled together with them, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. Notice this, verse 8, but you shall receive power, dunamis. Miracle working power. You, you shall receive power. We certainly know that he's talking directly to the apostles, but is Holy Spirit power only for the apostles? No, of course not. Absolutely not. It's for every believer. He who believes in me, the works that most assuredly I say to you, the He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Well, how are you going to do those works? By the Holy Spirit and his power. How did Jesus do it? By the Holy Spirit and power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. Well, it's not going to be any different for you and I. Isn't that right? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So one of the ways that we're an asset to God himself and to others is by being a witness. When's the last time you 
got beyond yourself enough to tell somebody about Jesus? No, no, you need to answer that question yourself. Because remember, remember we said the biggest hindrance to Jesus being able to use you is your, you, you or I being full of self. Rather than it's no longer I who lives, it's still I who lives. Right? The only reason you or I will open our mouths to be a witness, that is to give testimony. What does a witness do? They give testimony of what they've seen or heard. What is God asking us to do? Give testimony to what we've seen or heard. What it, he, he said, really simply saying, you give your encounter with Christ. Share with others what Jesus has done for you. When is the last time that we, we loved or cared enough about people, others, other than ourselves, that we got out of our comfort zone and shared our faith with somebody we didn't know? See, Christ lives in me, wants to use me, wants to help others through me. To be a witness, he's got to use your mouth. That's just one way that we can be an asset to others. I'm so glad my aunt that day told me Jesus could help me. Because from that day, my life's never been the same. Because she told me Jesus could help me and gave me her Bible. And said, go ahead and read. Take it and read. Praise God. The Lord needs every one of us to be a witness. I need to be a witness. I need to be a better witness. Greatest hindrance to being a witness is focus, because I'm focused on myself. What are they going to think? Blah, blah, blah. They're going to hell, guys. We're putting more importance on self what are they going to think of me? They're probably going to think me, I'm weird if I... That's all about us. I'm just keeping it real here today. I'm talking to me. I'm not preaching to you. That's okay. I'll preach to me all morning. Actually, it's afternoon now. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And I want us to see that it's not just the apostles that God wants to use, that he wants to use anybody who's a believer. Go with me to Acts chapter 6. And we'll end this morning in Acts chapter 6. Pick it up with verse 1. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Does Jesus still want to do the works that he did when he was on the earth? How's he going to do it? Through us. And he doesn't use just the original 12 apostles. If that was the case, we're in trouble. <laughs> They've been dead a long time. God's still using people who believe, who, who really believe that God... They've done this. They've unscrewed their lids. They've unscrewed their lids. Yeah, that's good, Randy, and threw the lid away. They've unscrewed their lids, and they believe the Scripture, and they act on the Scripture. Greater works, uh, uh, the, the works that I do, they will do. Why, why, are, why aren't the works being done? Because nobody's doing them. Because they don't believe that they can be done. So they don't do them. But it isn't that they can't be done. It's just that they don't believe that they can be done. And that God doesn't, wants to use them. And it's just so simply that there's nobody doing them. It doesn't mean that there's not people out there who need the Christ in us. That God wants to use us in miraculous ways. See, I'm not one to, to explain away the scriptures. 
I'm not one to go, well, you know. No, I take what Jesus said, John 14, 12, and I believe it. I believe it. And I believe that it's for today. In Acts chapter 6 here, it says in verse 1, Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. So the distribution to the widows was they're distributing food or things that they needed. Um, obviously, as a part of the church, there were probably, doesn't say how many widows, but there were widows who needed food because they didn't have any supply, right? Then it says in verse 2, it says, then the 12, that is the apostles, right? The 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it, it, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. What business? Distributing food. The food distribution business. Right? Was that important to the church? It was. It was important to the widows. They needed stuff, so there was a supply, but there needed to be... Obviously, there was a problem that things weren't getting done the way they needed to get done, and they realized we need to have better oversight of this, so we're going to choose seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we can appoint over this business. Right? Notice it, it says, and we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. Notice this. We're putting emphasis on Stephen. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Notice this. It says he was full of faith. He was full of faith and the Holy Spirit and Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they prayed, laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Verse 8, and Stephen, notice this, full of faith and what? power. Well, this first time power is mentioned, but we do see mentioned back in verse 5, he was uh, full of the faith and the Holy Spirit. So we know this, that Holy Spirit and power have a synonymous thought. And what we want to focus on is this idea that one, Stephen is not an apostle. He's not one of the 12. He's just one of this group that the group chose. The apostles didn't even choose him. Right? But what the other people do, did was they recognized he's full of the Holy Ghost and there's, he's full of faith. This man's full of faith. Why is faith important? Well, you're going to see it here. Stephen was full of faith and power and Stephen, full of faith and power, did. It's not enough to be full of power. You also have to be full of faith. Why? Because faith is the releasing point for the power. Every one of us in this room, if you've been, uh, the, God lives in you and you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're full of power. But you may not be full of faith. And if you're not full of faith, that means you've got doubt or unbelief, which is a lid, which is a hindrance to the power. The, is power an asset? Are we thankful for the power that's in this room today? The, not, not Holy Ghost power, I'm just talking electricity, or electrical power, right? Electrical power. Is it an asset to us? We're not having to hold candles up. Right? We, we've got power. Thank you, Lord, for the power. But Stephen was a man full of faith and power. See, the, this is, you need to understand this. This is the issue. We've got many believers full of power, 
but not full of faith. Faith for what? To use the power. Was Stephen special? What, what are the only things we see unique about Stephen? And I, not even unique. He's full of faith and power. Was he the only believer that was full of faith and power? Well, he may have been the only believer in this setting that was full of faith, but all the other believers were no, no doubt full of power. The difference between Stephen was not the power, but the faith. Praise God. Notice this. It says, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs. That word signs, also miracles, miracles among the people. Praise God. What is that power? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ. The power of Christ living in us. Spirit, Holy Spirit power. Christ's power living in us, wanting to do what? Work through us. To do what? Be an asset. Let's ask ourselves, as he worked wonders and miracles among the people, did somebody benefit from that? Praise God. So as we talk along these lines, do you sense a lid in your life? Do you sense a ceiling as it comes to God using you in the same way? Where, l- let me ask you this. Where is your scriptural disqualification? Listen to what I'm asking you. If you, if there's a lid, what scripture are you using for that lid? There is none. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. How's he going to do them? By Holy Spirit and power with faith. The problem is on the human side in respect to faith. Trusting that God wants to use us in amazing ways. See, you and I were all created to be an asset. And he's given us all the capacity we need to be the asset that he's created us to be. Hallelujah. I guarantee that the people that came in contact with Stephen were so glad Stephen yielded himself. What did he have confidence in? The Christ in him. He was full of power. Did he know that? Had to have known it. Says he was full of power. He must have known it. He had awareness of Christ living in him. And it was no longer Stephen living, but Christ living through him. Is it any different for you and I? No. No, it's not any different for you and I. It isn't. Praise God. So, I can even sense the, the, the lid. I can sense it in the room right now. I can just sense the, the ceiling. Almost like everybody in this room just hit the ceiling. Are, are we going to be able to, are we going to, you, are we, will you address your ceiling? See, I'm only responsible for my ceiling. I'm not responsible for yours. I can encourage you. I can present the truth like I've done here this morning. God, there's God, God is using people all over the earth like this. There are men and women that are full of faith and power, and God is doing works through them. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, there is. Blind eyes are being opened. Devils are being cast out. Lame, lame, uh, the lame are walking again. Yeah, cancers are leaving bodies. Through, through, through who? Through men and women who are full of faith and power. 
And they're not special people. Exactly. They've just yielded, became aware of, and concluded, it's no longer I who lives. What did, they, what, what did Paul do? He came to the end of himself. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. How much of Christ will we let live through us? And if he does, what will happen? Wonders. Miracles. Witness. Witness. Witness wonders miracles. Witness wonders miracles. Yes, witness. We agree with that. Be a witness. But it's not limited to being a witness. They didn't just get power to be a witness. Stephen got the same power they got. And what was that power for? He was full of faith and power to do what? Do wonders and miracles. Did he get a different dose of power than you or I did? The power isn't, there's no difference in power. It's one Holy Ghost, one God, one Christ. Amen. And the problem is, is oftentimes we as ministers have not brought these truths to the attention of our bodies, the people that we have in stewardship over, and that we haven't presented these truths continually. We've just been satisfied with preaching good messages. Not that There's nothing wrong with a good message. We, we've preached other messages that were very helpful to people in other areas, but why have we been avoiding this kind of stuff? Why? Why, why, would, why would we do that? And while, while we're doing that, our people are not understanding how God wants to use them at a highest level. You, I don't exist so that you can just come hear a message. I, I exist as a five-fold ministry gift, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. I don't ex exist to preach a pretty message to you. I exist to preach you the truth so that now you'll go out and do what? Work. 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 Do something. Witness. Do wonders and miracles. Where? Wherever you are. Start. What's going to be your start date? What if you just, what if, even, if you, even if you failed, but you just continued? What, what if you just, you just determined, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm just, I'm going to act. I'm going to act on the Word of God. I'm going to act on the Word of God. Jesus said, most assuredly, he, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he'll do also. And greater works will he, uh, than these he will do because I go to my Father, which is implying he sent him back the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost lives in us. And we should seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit with power. It is a separate experience that you can have from salvation. Amen. And it doesn't mean that apart from that, that God couldn't use you in, other, in certain ways. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a baptism of power. Hallelujah. But once we get it, it's not just to speak in tongues. We've so minimized the power. <laughs> We as charismatics, we get excited about tongues and prophecy. Well, that's only two of the gifts out of nine. Praise God. Seriously. Amen. You know, you know why we get so excited about those two things? Because we've got lid on the other things. Working of miracles, gift of faith, gifts of healings. Woo. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Well, we kind of like that. Anyways, praise God. 
We're just, what we're trying to do is give the opportunity to lift the lid. Lift the ceiling. How are we going to lift the ceiling? We just take the word at face value. We go, that's for me. He who believes in me, who's that? Anyone. Glory to God. We can do it. We just start somewhere. We just choose that today, from this day forward, I'm going to... I'm going, to be, I'm going to begin to act. And I want to increase the percentage of Christ living through me. If I'm only at 10%, what if I went to 15? What, what, if, what if it was just 5% more? What, would it, what if it was just 5% more Christ was living through me? Glory. You celebrate the 5% more. And then when you get to that 15%, well, you, move, you move it up, and you take it up another five, and then all of a sudden you hit 20. Glory to God. You don't contemn yourself. Oh, God, there's only, there's only 10% of Jesus working in me. I'm such a loser. There should be another 80% working through me. Ah, blah, blah, blah. No, celebrate the 10% that you are doing. And get excited about increasing it another five. Or another 10. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Does Christ live in you? Why does he live in you? So he can live through you and through me. Amen? Did you get anything out of that today? Again, I hope you, as you've been watching today that you've been challenged in some way. This is certainly a challenging message, I would say, to all of us. Uh, but let the scripture, scriptures speak for themselves. And uh, God wants to use all of us. You who are watching on Facebook, God wants to use you. You are an asset. God created you to be an asset. He wants to use you. He wants to mobilize you. Uh, again, so we, we just want to encourage you, get, get activated. Let God use you. The Christ that lives in you wants to live through you. Amen? So if you've been encouraged by this message, please take a minute and just hit the share button. Make this available to all your friends on Facebook. Again, if you'd like to be a blessing to the ministry, you can go to our website, newbeginningsbangor.org. And if you'd like to give there, you could just hit the pay PayPal button. Or if you'd like to send something in the mail, as I get, uh, said before, you can send that to New Beginnings Church, 8 Molly Lane, Bangor, Maine, 04401. We love you all and appreciate you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget, Grow Night this week, uh, teaching a series on prayers that get answered, and we're focusing on praying the Word. And so this Wednesday night, 6.30, we'll continue on in that series. Be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day.